Okay, a little bit of fiddling around with the phasing between the flywheel and the pulley, and there she goes. Hello Internet, I'm Guy, and this, as you might have guessed, is a Stirling engine. Uh, it was invented by a London pastor named Robert Stirling back in 1816, and this is a little miniature one that I just purchased because I like the idea of Stirling engines. Now, I'm a hobby machinist, and I freely admit it, I, I don't have the chops to start building a Stirling engine from scratch here. So um, I'm going to experiment by basically reproducing as much of this as I can by replacing parts one at a time throughout this whole thing until I've mostly replaced it. And I'm going to change the aesthetic from this silver, stainless, and aluminum uh, design to a kind of a steampunk effect where I'm going to do it all with brass and I'm going to make a walnut base for it. Just give it that look and then there's an LED here that lights up when the thing is running and I'm going to actually bring out a bunch of LEDs to, to light the whole thing. It'll be really kind of cute. So um, if I light it right now, you can see the flame maybe in the video, I'm not sure. In about 20 seconds uh, I'll be able to just flip this and it'll start going. You can kind of hear it sort of saturates a little bit there. So a few more seconds here. It's burning alcohol. So this is what is known as an external combustion engine for those who don't know and it's a heat cycle engine. So this this is the hot side. This is the cold cylinder here that's pushed on the other uh, arm here. A belt drive over to a little generator or motor that's used as a generator. So this should be about ready. There it goes. Right. Now, if you wait long enough, uh, it'll get up to speed, and it goes pretty darn fast. And once it does get up to speed, you'll see this little LED come on. So amongst the things I'm planning to change, instead of having these two posts here and this, this structure here, I'm gonna do a whole big tombstone out of half inch um, brass right here. I'm gonna reproduce this and this pretty much as is, um, but they're all gonna be learning exercises for me. You see the LED is glowing right now. These are going to be challenging because these are um, both cast and machined and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there. I, I might experiment with just getting rid of this part and then just using the original glass cylinders. I'm also going to experiment with uh, replacing the interior piston with say brass or aluminum. I'm hoping brass. Um, so this is going to be a multi-episode uh, series of videos as I progress through this and just find ways uh, and learn um, how to do this, how to, how to make things like flywheels, which I've never done before. So uh, in today's episode, I'm going to replace this pulley right here, and I'm also going to make the wood base, and maybe I'll go a little further. Stick with me. My friend John gave me this nice chunk of walnut. It's good on this side, but really cracked out on that side. I'm going to use this for the base for the Stirling engine, about this much of it. The engine should fit just right in here. Um, so I'm going to need to rip it down with my big ripping blade. I'm going to start off by ripping off the bottom to get it flat because it's very cupped and wavy. Then I'm going to take off the top, oh, three quarter inch or so and get a nice flat surface on the top that I can work with. So here we go. I'll shift that over a little bit, make sure it fits on both sides. Yeah, oh, this is going to be tricky. Try and cut it like that to start with, I think. So over to my production drum sander here, I've got some coarse grit sandpaper on there. I think it's about 150 grit. I'm going to hook up my dust collector, get some dust control going. Cut this down. So here's how a little bit bigger than the original base. I just wanted to have room to put a molding around the edges here. That's going to look nice. So I'm over to the router table now. I've made two complete blanks in case I mess one up, but I'm going to use this uh, fancy OG shaped router bit to route over the edge and make it kind of vintage looking. 
So let's fire all the equipment up here, dust collector and router. Yep, a little bit of sanding and detailing here and that'll look really nice. Looks looks funky and authentic and kind of steampunky. Okay, now a quick coat of wipe-on tongue oil finish. And then I'll probably add some wipe-on poly on top of that, which is the way I normally make furniture back when I used to make furniture. Oh yeah, this is going to be beautiful. Got to get it right down into those grooves though, and that's a little tricky right in the molding here. Final swipe on the top, and we're going to let that dry. The first piece that I'm planning to replicate is probably the simplest. It's the little V pulley that turns out to be exactly a one inch diameter. Um, the only thing that's going to be interesting is making the small hole and pinning this at the exact right radius. But this is pretty simple to make, so I jump right into that first. So logically the first thing to do is face off the end here. So now I'm going to mark off the uh, cuts that I need to make here for the V-groove and the end to cut off. So just going to set my caliper to that dimension, whatever that is, I don't care. And mark that off. And then I'm going to mark off the center, again, just copying that directly. That's where I'm going to center up my first cut to make the recess for the V-groove. So that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to start with uh, making the recess for the V-groove. So I'm going to bring in my narrow parting tool, line it up right on that mark, lock down my carriage, lock down my cross slide, and tiptoe into the cut. Yep, that's going pretty well. So now let me just establish a depth of cut. This is definitely not a critical dimension. It'll just slightly change the speed of the uh, generator when it's hooked up to this pulley through the belt drive. So I'm not too concerned about being fussy about this. So now I'm going to bring in my pointed carbide cutter with the two 30 degree uh, angles on it. Get that centered up, lock down my carriage and ease my way in a little bit. So that bottoms out. And then I'm just going to ease back and forth to left and right to make the full pulley here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm looking down on it and uh, I think I need to open that up just a little bit and then I'll try the belt on it. pretty good to me. I'm going to just take the belt and put it on there and see how that looks. Here's the belt. That looks fine to me. 
So I'm going to check the shaft diameter here by measuring the inside and I've got, I don't know whether you can read that, but it's 530 seconds. So that's an easy drill size to do. So starting with a centering drill, of course. I'm going to start with an eighth inch drill bit though and go eight millimeters deep. And then I'm going to step up to the 532nd. And here's the 532nd bit, zeroing my DRO and going for eight millimeters. There we are, bottomed out. So I'm going to deburr the hole just a little bit. I've put my eighth inch drill in backwards as a catcher for this when I part it off. So going in to start parting now. Now I'm going to use a file and just deburr these edges before I finish parting. So a little bit of deburring right there. Same thing in here. Just drop it right in there. That should do. All right, back to parting. Up, oh, you never know your speeds and feeds until you find out the hard way. So yeah, I guess I have enough stick out that I should really have had the live center in there all along. Now I do, lesson learned. That's not working either. What do I need to learn here? Okay, so I resorted to a hacksaw since I was struggling with parting. Okay, let's see if I can face this all off and clean it up now. So I've got the pulley chucked up in the mill on some parallels and I'm just going to now try and find my way into the center. That's close. Let me see if I can drop in. All right, so now how far off am I? That's pretty good right there. Okay, I've got my center drill in and I know I need to go to 0.250 over. So I'm going to just creep across here. Not too much. Come back a little bit. Oops, overshoot again. That is close enough. Let me lock that carriage down. And I'm going to do a little center drilling here. Good start. Okay, I'm all lined up with the 532nd drill bit, and now I need to go 0 0.230 deep. I've got my DRO set up and zeroed, so. That looks good. So it turns out the original set screw in here was at a 90 degrees to the pin, and it appears to have been a number six or 632. So 
I'm going to uh, eyeball this to center by centering the drill on the center hole, which is right about there. Lock down my carriage and raise this up and then eyeball center the other direction. It's got to drop right into that V slot. Now I'm going to swap out to a center drill to get a start on it. And now to run that tap drill all the way through. Got it. And I've gotten my number six tap in the tap follower. All right, now to try a set screw in there. Okay, I've cut a piece of uh, stainless steel that will pop right in there, hopefully. Yes, so that looks about right, same depth. And now I can put my set screw is already in there. I'm going to slide it onto the shaft and boom, that just fits very nicely. Tighten it down. Yeah. And so if I just slip that onto there, a little challenging to get on. Okay. Yeah, that will work just fine. This belongs on there like that. And I think I've got a working system here. So the acid test of my upgrade is, does it work? So i fire up my heater there and see if the system will work. Oh, of course, I have to figure out the proper phasing here, and that's what I don't have right yet. Okay, a little bit of fiddling around with the phasing between the flywheel and the pulley, and there she goes. You can see the LED glowing there. If I turn off one of these movie lights, you can see it even better. That is actually running faster than I think it did before. Excellent.